lot from families that I'm big and my husband is big and I just have big kids. The incidence of diet-related disease in our country is startling. It's part of the obesity issue. Cornell University Cooperative Extension, what that name represents is, first of all, we're a part of the land-grant university system. Abraham Lincoln helped to create the land-grant system, so he offered any university educational body that was willing to go out and do research to help those that were settling out in the more rural parts of our country would be able to survive and be sustained. There's a land-grant university in every state. Those universities must contract with the local county offices. That's what the word cooperative means. Cooperation between the university, the USDA, the state government, the local government base, and the residents of a community, and our job is to serve those residents with educational programs that help them live productive lives. Through educational programs, the Cornell Cooperative Extension of Dutchess County builds strong, healthy youth, adult families, and communities while enhancing the economic, social, and agricultural and natural resources of Dutchess County. Overweight and obesity are both labels for ranges of weight that are greater than what is generally considered healthy for a given height. The terms also identified ranges of weight that have been shown to increase the likelihood of certain diseases and other health problems. 62% of all adults in Dutchess County are overweight. Obesity in itself has a syndrome of effects. So many issues. We could go into a lot of things. Hardening of the arteries, plaques in the arteries, heart disease hypertension, various types of cancer. Diabetes is one a common one that you'll hear about. Syndrome X, where you get a combination of ill effects that do have a dietary influence. I was able to identify as many as 175 different influencing factors on what you eat tonight for dinner. And those factors range, yes, individual choice. What I sit down to eat for my lunch or my dinner is my choice, and that's going to directly affect the health that I establish for myself. But they also range to what are the zoning policies in the community that you live in? Is it zoned for agriculture? Is it zoned for fast food? Is it zoned for supermarkets? The school system that you attend, the food environments that people are exposed to, their budgets are so limited, so they're tending to get whatever's easiest and cheapest to do. When they're shopping for food, they're trying to get the most amount of money for their dollar. If you go into the grocery store, and buy a peach for $1.39 that might last a child two minutes. Or you can buy the big huge jumbo bag of chips for the same $1.39 that you might get three or four meals out of. So the socialization that you receive, the things that you have access to in your neighborhood. And a lot of the nutritious foods take more time to prepare. Families struggle with time, so I think that is a big issue. The kind of opportunities and experiences you have growing up. So often we have a parent say, well, I don't eat carrots, so my child doesn't like them either come to learn that that taste was learned by that child. They actually do like carrots and will eat carrots. With so many influencing factors on what you eat, it can be difficult to make healthy choices. The Nutrition Advisory Committee of Dutchess County is a group dedicated to helping families make the right choices and to help sustain a healthier lifestyle. NAC is the Nutrition Advisory Committee, making sure that in general people have access to healthy, nutritious foods. We all work together for common purposes. Providing emergency food programs and other forms of basic assistance. Providing education about food and farming and working to improve access to locally grown and healthy food. So we're feeding people it's more or less off the street. Helping to serve the meals to children. We feed kids in after school programs. Last summer we fed 61,000 meals to children 18 and below to give them a nutritious meal. We are able to provide nutritional education. To identify vegetables is one thing I think that people really need to learn. How can they learn to cook it? do the things they need to do with it if they can't identify what it is. To join a community supported agriculture farm or to just go out and visit a farm or do a pick your own so that their children and they are aware of where their food is coming from. Well anybody can you know begin to improve a situation by eating a well-balanced diet. To me it's always been about balance. Nutrition is 80% of the situation, 20% of the situation is making sure that you are having physical activity. Increased physical activity. It doesn't have to be, you know, really strenuous activity. That may be a little jump rope activity. It could be simply walking. 
hula hoop kinds of things, although they're both equally important. We let the families know that we'll be monitoring their child's health and weight during the year. One of the things that we've started doing is giving all the families information about the health risks of their children being overweight. We do work with the families and the kids to expand what they're used to eating. The program is for people who are impoverished or people who are disadvantaged. The children with disabilities. Or temporarily without income are benefiting from the trend in nutritious eating. We work with them to help them to educate them that you can buy nutritious foods. Every time they sit down to a, to a meal and everything that's there on their plate, do they think about where that meat came from and who produced it, how it was processed and got to your plate? We do a lot of education around the obesity issue. And even the beef cattle alone, the growth hormone for weight gain it's carried over to the human being. I think that's part of a problem with even obesity. Unbelievable incidence of childhood obesity in our country has woken people up to the issue. Increasing at a startling rate. So now we can't look the other way anymore. Our children now are likely to die in their 30s of the same diseases that normally wouldn't cause you loss of life until you're in your 60s, 70s, and 80s. Children are developing things that were considered adult illnesses before they even reach adulthood. That reality is a real wake up call. And so a lot more people are getting on board with what can we do to change this situation and nutrition and physical activity, they're at the heart of those changes. Although there are over a hundred factors that affect what we eat every day, actions can be taken personally and locally to influence many of them. We encourage you to get involved in the CCEDC create healthy workplace habits, reach out to local government, and of course, make changes in your own life. Buying and eating healthier food and exercising on a regular basis can all help you overcome the risks and dangers of obesity and poor lifestyle.